Thank you, John, for recording. Everybody's here to listen to what you have to say. Uh, in my vision, uh, this could also turn into a discussion group. So I would love to listen from the people in our audience. So please, please take part. We all are very excited and maybe also scared about what's going to happen with this new technology. But as Costa did in the past, let's focus on the positive side of it and talk about real stuff that we can do and, and possibly make money with uh, in our beautiful industry. With that, I'll shut up uh, and looking at the Q&A and the way it ends. Uh, Kostya, please, unless Alina has anything to say. No, no, I let Kostya, please. So what do I start with? Diego, will ask me some kind of question and I'll uh, take it from there. I'll do the question. <laughs> you do the questioning. You're the inquisitor today. I'm the inquisitor today. So tell us about your experience, what successful projects you've accomplished lately with ChatGPT for your clients and how can we in the language industry can adopt the same uh, ideas, technologies or synergies that you have, you have obtained? Okay, so quick introduction then first. I don't know if there is anyone in the room who doesn't know me, but uh, I'm a language industry researcher. And my second hat is I run a small team called Custom Machine Translation, where we build models for localization people, make uh, them uh, better adapted to the context, and uh, we implement it in, in their environment. We started about two and a half years ago with just you know uh, the service of taking the data, cleaning it up, uh, putting it into Google, Microsoft, uh, Modern MT, Globalese, et cetera. So we put in five, six, seven different brands, compare them after they have been trained and uh, see what kind of results uh, the user gets and if there are problems fixing them. So it's a very, very niche company in a, in, in a small niche. And over the couple of years, we've automated the process. We've seen many problems connected with customized machine translation because everyone wanted to work with translation, machine translation in the past, uh, and they wanted to differentiate somehow from Google. If you are just another translation company that uses DeepL or another translation company that uses Google, what's your advantage, right? And uh, how are you relevant if Google is so good? And the customers ask these questions and uh, uh, the companies look for engineers to, to do that. Very often they um, hire uh, internally the machine translation leaders uh, or they can turn to an outsourced company like ours. So that's my background. And um, ChatGPT was uh, uh, very interesting for me to discover. I'm in the same shoes as uh, you are, uh, basically experiencing the revolution. Uh, what I did differently is I already had some model experience and understanding how a model training and model adoption implementation project works, what kind of problems there are. And so once it really hit home and it was clear that it's big technological revolution, I said, I must not stand aside. This is my time. This is my chance. Let's go for it. And uh, with huge help from Diego, we organized the first webinar. Uh, on the topic, I didn't speak at the webinar, just asked questions, and the leaders of the industry used this platform for their debate and to allay their kind of um, uh, fears and also uh, uh, their understanding of the opportunity, because it is a real revolution and people are affected by it, everyone is affected, uh, compared to maybe different advances in NLP that were five years ago, ten years ago. Uh, with ChatGPT, NLP uh, is available to everyone, right? You can take a student, you give them ChatGPT, they ask ChatGPT what to do, and voila, it's done. So it's a little bit of a Robin Hood, right? It takes the power from NLP guys and gives it to everyone. It's not a system which is difficult to approach, no. It's built into every application, it's Microsoft Office, it's... Uh, um, I don't know, your uh, Gmail plugin, which writes emails for you. It's uh, it's a part of everything. And the quality is so good in question answering, sentiment analysis, classification, finding the code. You can ask it to make it uh, your uh, uh, formula for Excel. You can ask it anything. People have suspected it's, it's like some kind of 
superhuman entity, like it's a god or duty that can uh, tell them what is the meaning of life and so on. And so some people were excited and the others were scared and these moods alternated for a while. Now uh, this, this first wave of hype is wearing down and people are uh, working hard across the board to take advantage of the technological wave. And we're amongst them. Uh, so we have the first two projects uh, to evaluate uh, chat GPT performance in machine translation versus uh, DeepL, Google, and the like. And our first project uh, actually comp was completed yesterday, the, the human evaluation. Uh, it was with a um, software company uh, uh, specialized in, uh, in health. Uh, and they have a particular style they had, uh, I think, six languages. Uh, and so we evaluated across those. Uh, and when we started evaluating, we were working with an older version of ChatGPT uh, with DaVinci 03. It uh, was possible to customize it, but the fine tunes were difficult to do. It required an engineer, and they were broken down uh, very often. Then uh, ChatGPT 3.5 model became available uh, within the last uh, you know month or so through the API, and we could take it and then we put a, a prompt, a very detailed prompt which could absorb the glossary of the customer, the style guide, this kind of uh, reference information. Uh, it could understand what kind of persona the translations are meant for. Uh, and so we kind of customized the output of the model, uh, which we evaluated. And then uh, just as we were finishing, GPT-4 came about and we started looking at GPT-4 as well, right? So uh, the my first feeling when uh, Chad GPT came about uh, was that the translation use case is not going to be big. I don't know if you've, if you've followed me on LinkedIn, you've seen a couple of infographics our team has released. One of them was on the disruption. So I'll probably open it here. If you give me a second, may I share my own LinkedIn here? Is it, uh, is it, is it polite? Diego? It's allowed, it's allowed. It's, it's okay. allowed. Go okay. for it. Self-promotion, blatant self-promotion, guys. That's the leverage for you having you here, isn't it? Yep. So look, this thing got 40,000 views. It was the uh, popular uh, early kind of... Uh, Infographic and so well, my first view was uh, all right. We have raw machine translation, machine translation with some enhancements, customization, then post edited, uh, manual translation without MT in the mix, and then transcreation. Different levels of quality and process. And I thought that the impact in the translation would be uh, like step by step, not too huge because the dedicated models like DeepL and Google, uh, they've been doing this for a long time. And the technology behind ChatGPT is the same as behind every machine translation. It's a transformer. So just the different kind of data, how they tweaked it, how they trained it. And ChatGPT is not meant for translation. It's meant for uh, answering questions in the chat. And I thought, okay, so uh, maybe it will become a disruptor here and everyone will switch to large language models. Uh, smaller disruption here in our localization programs but a huge disruption and immediate impact in um, in transcreation, where you can uh, you know you can tell ChatGPT to write you a song in uh, Italian or Alina, what language you don't speak? In German. German. So you can tell it ChatGPT uh, write a story about me in German, and it can do it, right? So uh, this creative component, which was always ascribed to humans as the last bastion that the um, will never be. Victor, I'm in a webinar. You can go. Sorry, I have a visitor here. Uh, where were I? So the big impact would be from trans in transcreation area. And uh, as we progressed, as we went through the evaluation, uh, the, the the surprise uh, conclusion and the finding was that no, it's uh, freaking good at translation. It's uh, uh, it's on par with DeepL, it's on par with uh, customized Google, and it's won against those uh, leaders of the market, uh, won against others uh, uh, in um, two combinations out of six. And, 
you know, to customize Google, you need to clean up your translation memory, export it, clean it up, mix it up, make sure you have no bad segments, uh, then upload it to, to the console that only an engineer can use, then upload your glossary and see with different tests how it performs and pay it 300 bucks just for the compute time. So that's uh, only engineer friendly. And then when it runs, it's 80 bucks per million characters, uh, the, 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 the default price. And the thing that people don't know is that customized Google models uh, often hallucinate and they give you bad errors which do not exist in stock models. So you would train your stuff, you would put your money in there, and then later on it would come back to bite you in the backside. Okay, the trained model is better. It's understanding the terminology. But when you introduce a translation memory, more often than not, you have problems in your translation memory. Everyone says, we've been doing great translations. But in fact, no. Every time in translation memory, there's a problem. And one small problem, like, uh, you know, there's the story by Red Bradbury, where the guy goes in the past and steps on a butterfly. And in the future, the world is different. Right? Uh, that's the kind of feeling you get uh, uh, with working with these engines. You misplace a comma somewhere, and then you end up with a model which misplaces a comma everywhere. That sucks, and you want <clears throat> sorry, uh, you want to maybe fix it, pay another three hundred bucks, and go through your translation memory and find that kind of problem somewhere. Not that easy, right? The the the, the, the training is a hassle sometimes. That's why people need engineers to take care of this, and you know the, the whole quality program on top of MT. With ChatGPT, you just tell it, bad ChatGPT, you're not translating it right. Translate this as that. And that's it. And it starts translating like you want it. So it was like, oh my God, my, my jaw dropped. And uh, it was so easy. So uh, basically with a good script, uh, which goes through the API, it can work. We already integrated ChatGPT into Trados. You know, we have uh, a small company, so little software. We have... Uh, the middleware where you have different machine translation engines and we connected it to Trados. Uh, it was our first cattle where we connected. We gave it uh, the, the window. You can write your uh, prompt. And uh, now I have this vision that a linguist works in Trados here. And then the second window, if they don't like something, there is a recurrent error, they just change the way Chad GPT works. I say, don't do this, do that. And it instantly changes. And now I, the, yes, Diego. Sorry to interrupt you. There's a question. I think that's the right moment to answer to this question. Uh, I, I'll ask you, uh, which of the ChatGPT versions do you find most use, useful and easy to use? Yeah, the, the, the 3.5 one, which is fast. Uh, four uh, is can better. Can we just disambiguate ChatGPT versus GPT? So let's let's say Chat GPT 3.5 Turbo is the model which is now the mainstay. Four is better, but it's super slow. It's not available through an API unless you're big friends with OpenAI. But 3.5 is everywhere, and uh, you can use it for anything, right? You can use it to clean up translation memory, re remove uh, named entities, anonymize. Uh, uh, you can extract terminology with it. You just say. There is the text, your GPT, extract me terminology. Then you say, translate that terminology, categorize that terminology. You can do all that, right? Anything you can imagine, you just put it in words and it works much better than your employees, right? Uh, not my employees, but um, generic employees, right? Our employees, okay, we got Our it. employees, Our yes, employees. right? So uh, okay. it instantly understands what you want. It gives you an instant uh, return and... Um, it, it performs the about, task with a high level of accuracy, I think higher than human. What about the GDPR compliance? Yeah, what about them? What about inserting all these requests with the text that you put in ChatGPT, even if it's through API or without the API? Uh, le let me show you something. Please. I need to, to fish it out of my Slack. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, before I find it, uh, right, um, the linguists should not be scared. Actually, the linguists are super duper empowered by this because who writes the prompts? Who tells the models what to do? It's the linguists. And so it's uh, it's taking the power from uh, shadowy IT people 
in the backend and uh, it gives the power um, to the linguist. Yeah, but not to any linguist, to the linguists that continue to evolve, learn and develop. Not everybody who just happens to be a, a casual linguist. Right. I'm just looking for the uh, for the opt out form. So if you have an account, I see that the police is coming to get me already. I'm <laughs> doing something wrong. Uh, anyway, so if you have an account, there is a form to opt out and you opt out and that's it. They don't use your data. I hope. I mean, we have to trust them, right? Trust the AI guys to be very prudent with our data. Can I uh, show your, there's another infographic that I found very useful and you shared it. It has your brand. Yeah, that's, you the, that's the use case infographic. Yeah. There's a new version which fixes a problem here on the right. So you see, we've uh, repeated uh, this twice, and this is now clearly. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't notice. <laughs> Thank you for flagging. You were not attentive. No, I was not paying too much attention, I guess. But I think this is very interesting because we are here also to understand where we actually could use it, right? Uh, other than being scared, and those are the real cases where we could effectively use this new technology. Yeah, so do you want me to go case by case or uh, hit some specific I mean, considering our audience and the LIA members, uh, basically, we, we are small to medium LSPs mainly. Where do you see we can really leverage this technology? Everywhere. Uh, uh, like uh, translation, it's uh, friggin' good and uh, it's uh, super cheap compared to everything else. And you can tell it how to translate, easy. Translation memory repair, you give a detailed prompt uh, or have an engineer give you a detailed prompt, you repair your translation memory. And it's cheap enough. What do you mean by repair? Well, if you look at your old translation memory, you have many, I don't know, duplicates, uh, maybe spelling errors, orthographic errors, it could be rewritten in a better way. The language has moved away. Maybe the terminology is not propagated everywhere because it was evolving as the people were translating. So you can upload your TMX file and have it, uh, uh, you know, made but better. But this is where you would need to have someone do a little bit of programming on top of the technology, right? The, 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 the prompt writing and a little bit of programming and it works, right? Yeah, that's where I think we need to disambiguate between chat GPT and GPT, right? Because we are all used to, to since a couple of months, to this uh, chat GPT interface where you go there and basically you write things and you, you get an output. Mm -hmm. Using the GPT model is different. You use the same model just through an API, right? Because you cannot fit your entire translation memory in your chat window. Or yeah. if you could, you would, it would take you a year. But uh, an engineer, a script, some, uh, some uh, dancing around it to make it work. And voila, you can have your translation memories from years old uh, brought up to snuff, right? You can, uh, I don't know, you have multiple customers in the same domain you want to anonymize to train uh, on their data without mentioning their names and the personally identifiable information, remove personally identifiable information, right? It, yes, I, I saw the, the, the smiley. It might not be legal in some countries, right? You need uh, some fo formula for regex, cleaning up your stuff. You get it from chat GPT. You need to ask uh, the meaning of your work and how to position yourself, marketing, you ask chat GPT. Everything you do, you can ask the machine. It knows better. Is, is, there's this um, science fiction um, series, um, uh, The Expense, you know, the TV series. The, the, there's also the book. And in the book, uh, the Martian Marines, they have the slogan, uh, everything you do, I can do better. I can do everything better than you. Uh, it, it's, the, it's the motto. I think uh, you take this motto and with uh, Chad GPT, you can do everything better than your uh, other guy or oh, lady. I'm excited. So there, there, there are you know. some questions for you and a comment. I will start with a comment easier. 
Yes. So Georgia is saying in Episquai, that's a nice company based in Barcelona, we have implemented it and we are now able to boost the output of transcriptions and subtitles to create different outputs starting from audio video files, creating blog articles, recaps, key highlights, advanced search functionalities. Isn't that amazing? Okay, another really fellow enthusiast. I salute you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I will go with questions. We have five already. Okay. Uh, Boriana is asking, uh, tell us more about the Twados integration in parallel with your TM uh, or TMs, or yeah. TMs meaning transmission memories, plural, or instead of. Can I show? Uh, is it? Sure. I mean, this is the like a product demo. I didn't uh, prepare for this so much. I no, stop to... sharing my screen and you can show whatever you want. Okay. In fact, we were quite envisioning this that you'll show us some some stuff. So right with your with your permission, all right. So yeah, because the... uh, looking at the other questions, we have linguists as well here. We need to. So, so this is our approach, right? Uh, this is something that you can register for yourself on on, on the website. It's uh, free for the first fifty thousand characters and so. And uh, we have a middleware, right? So you can connect your multiple machine translation engines, and you can select. Uh, I want DeepL for German, and I want uh, uh, Modern NT for Italian, for example, and I want Amazon for Arabic, uh, A for A, for example. So initially, we envisioned this this way, and it connects to Trados. So you have the LSP PM deciding which machine translation goes where, and only one plugin is required on the linguist side, right? Whatever machine translation is used, they don't need to reinstall anything. Uh, it's all centralized. Right, so it's a simple piece of software. We've built it over the last year. And uh, then when uh, GPT came about, open uh, AI's models, I ran to the developers and said, integrate it fast, quickly, quickly. So they did. And so typically, the, the it's an empty account here. Uh, the, the PM would go to a template and it would say, okay, for uh, English to French, I want to use Microsoft for pharmaceutical domain. But uh, now we want to use ChatGPT. So you create a template, right? Let's say for uh, English to Italian, right? And you select uh, uh, ChatGPT as your engine for translation. And that, oh, hold on. I'm sure, yeah, I'm showing you the right one. And then it creates you the uh, the prompt engineering window. You write the persona. We're going to create templates here, uh, style guide. You upload your glossary, and you save it, right? And then every time you query for translation, it will use your persona. So I would, for example, say, "You are a translator from English to Italian for a fashion brand." Uh, your style is uh, high, uh, high flown and uh, laurel, whatever that means. Like, for example, <laughs> here I, I just say, do not <laughs> translate uh, come ti chiamo. Do I write it right? The uh, an H is missing after the C, it's a key, chiamo. Yeah, right. Uh, as uh, how do you do? Translate is as uh, how are you? Something like this. Or oh, it, it's how, oh, what's your name? Anyway. What's your name? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's, what's your name? I, I don't speak Italian. I just learn it on Duolingo now. Speak Italian but better than my. You, you get. You get the idea, right? Uh, you you give the the model instructions. It remembers it, and as you go, you see there is a recurring error. You could just go here and you edit this, and it's pretty easy to build. So I'm sure that Cat Tools will build it all over. We've uh, just want to say we've been there first, and uh, eventually it will be a part of everything, right? Because if you can. Uh, Customize on the fly, the linguists themselves can go in there. I mean, if you're a linguist, you can go and try it for free, right? You can open it and, and play with it. Maybe something will get broken. It was released yesterday, it wasn't tested yet. 
we're looking for some volunteer to try it and tell us what doesn't work. Anyway, so imagine you give it instructions and tomorrow uh, it works for, the, for, for, for everyone and it can remember all your terminology and stuff. So this is a kind of, kind of first of line of attack and it puts the linguist in the driving seat. They become the prompt engineer and whatever they do, it's saved. Now in 3.5, there was the limitation. It can only remember 3000 words. So if you have a long um, glossary or style guide, it's not going to work. But um, the four, um, model four is uh, up to 80,000 words and it's more than enough to upload all instructions, explain the target audience. And as you do that, the, the output changes. So we measured uh, in, in, a, in a previous project when we prompt engineered for, for a specific topic, we had 23% uh, uh, fewer errors, for example. Oh. It was a significant difference. So Boyana is yes. volunteering yeah. to take part. We have a volunteer. No. Thank you. My uh, commercial presentation is done. Awesome. We have other questions as well. Absolutely. Louisa. Wanna... Okay, you're going Where to... are you going? Oh, Anna. Okay, that's because well, she's Romanian as well, I guess, right? So you <laughs> said, Kostya, uh, you mentioned uploading at the uh, You mean upload where? Because at TBX. So in this easy. thing, we, we, we built now the support for TBX, right? We don't have a TMX support yet. We, we didn't figure out how to use TMX yet. But it potentially it is possible. Okay. It, and it might be easier than we imagined. Cool. We're looking forward. Very cool. Oh, so we I are looking forward as well. Maybe one day I'll be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I read the question from the Romanian Oana, so you should read the question from the Italian Luisa. <laughs> yes, OK. Hi, Luisa. I'll read your question. So the possible future for post editors could be as trainers of chat GPT, right? We won't be working directly on text, but on the rules that train the engine. Right? No, you work on text. It still makes uh, a critical error every every hundred words. Okay, so one critical not... error. Yeah, well, it's our first test. Ask me in the three months when we have more practice, maybe it will be one critical error per 300 words, who knows? Yeah, so oh, that, that's already translator, something. translator jobs are not going to be lost, are going to be just refined so that they are going to all become post editors practically. You, I mean, with Google and the, this idea that you have a trainer, a professional company doing a training, you have no control. You just report it, and then you wait half a year to, 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 to get it fixed. For example, e-translation, the European uh, Commission's uh, uh, MT engine. engine, they collect all the feedback, they collect all the translation memories, and every six months they retrain, right? So uh, you work for six months, at the, and in six months, the error that you reported might be fixed. Yeah. Right? And with this, you type it, immediately it's fixed, immediately, without any problem. You don't need to be an engineer. Everyone can do that. Perfect. Big change, okay. right? The, your linguist is becoming super important. And what if your linguist is bad and they teach uh, chat GPT, uh, like you don't pay them, like you're one of this uh, translation companies that pay too late. Uh, there's another scandal like this right now going on social network. You don't pay. Uh, they stay in your system. They go to your chat GPT and they give the rules to, 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 to write uh, an, obscen an obscenity. Every time somebody says... Uh, Bad words every now and then, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Or oh my God. annual returns, uh, it comes back as uh, something you don't want to see in an annual report. Don't, Our don't, EBITDA don't replaced with... Uh, ideas. Just don't give bad ideas, give good ideas. Yeah, yeah. A smart person can do a lot of... It's a great work. idea. Imagine imagine how, uh, uh, how fun it would be to read about... Uh, I don't know what kind of words I can say in this chat, but uh, something below the belt instead of EBITDA in an annual report, your investors would be thrilled. Definitely, they will invest uh, very happily. But I think in this way, vendor managers are gonna become more and more important because this is how they will um, well um, filter the, the good linguists out of the pool of linguists, isn't it? A good linguist is a is high quality linguist who is highly satisfied with the translation company. If you don't do it right, They'll just come back at you and they'll, uh, they'll destroy your prompts. I, I'm, I'm Definitely. Sure. Especially after they hear your ideas. 
<laughs> yeah. So should we go with questions? Are you tired, Kostya? No, I'm not tired. I'm energized. Thank you. Okay. No, no tea? No, no more tea? I go, Boyana. Who needs tea when I have uh, when I have so much fun with you here? Awesome. <laughs> Ooh, this is getting long. So Alessandra is asking: Do the prompts need to be written in English, or do they work better in English than in any other language? Yes. Well, yes to which one? Uh, they work better do, in English. They work better in English. It, to my understanding, we haven't tested it uh, exclusively or extensively, and I believe they work better in English. That's always a matter of volumes, right? Like data. Quantity. There's more data in English than in any other language there, I think. OK. okay. I want to take the question from another Romanian, Paul. <laughs> I think all the Romanians in the chat. Any idea how ChatGPT compares to Google Bard? Any other linguistic model coming close to ChatGPT? No idea. Awesome. That was quick. <laughs> that was very quick. I'll... Yeah, but it's something that we'll think about. I, I ask a scientist, please. I'm not a scientist. I'm a, a guy between the scientists and the, and the language industry. You know, you know, I've spent a lot of time on um, AMTA, the uh, Association for Machine Translation in America, and a big part of AMTA is scientists from big corporations. And uh, I think I'm trying to get the information from that world and put it in, in into this world. So I'm kind of acting as a translator, finding the applicability in the in the researching world, in in the scientific world. That's in in, in the language industry, in, 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 in what we do. In what we do, exactly. Okay, so well, let's, let's, let's make a test. I have an idea, uh, if you allow me. Okay. Uh, let's prompt chat GPT and ask, uh, and ask it, uh, what about GDPR compliance? Okay. Which one do we use? Uh, model 4? Whatever you want. Okay. Which uh, I think it's overloaded at the moment. I'll log in into our account. Hold on. Yep. So there we go. So what do you want to ask? If I use ChatGPT to translate confidential content, does it remain confidential? Okay. If I use uh, ChatGPT to translate confidential, Now drums, everybody's waiting. And the questions are falling up like crazy. I'll switch off my communication so that it's Okay. Okay. Well, it's uh, pretending that everything's fine. Do we believe it? <laughs> yeah, because the same question was addressed some time ago and the, the answer was no, it does not. Yeah, there is an opt-out form. Uh, let me look for it and I'll come back to you. So I, I, I Because I found it for my during, team today. Awesome. I sent this during Kostya's webinar. Uh, the, ah, the so you have webinar. it, right? Sorry? You have it, right? You have it well, on, on, on the chat. The form. Form. Yeah, no. well, here we are. No, I, I mean, I think all these... You have the data deletion process uh, and uh, you own the output. And can I give my, my take on this? I mean, we, we always think about privacy of our own data, but at least my experience, what we usually translate is something that's probably already published in English. And tomorrow we'll be published in Italian. So where does this problem really lie? I mean, where where do we need to be concerned about the privacy? I, I will not document. put my you know personal information on ChatGPT. Sure Why are you concerned about privacy, Diego? It no, was the same with machine I, translation. I was, just, my, my, I was just saying I'm not concerned at all. Remember, remember in 2010, nobody wanted to put anything in the cloud. All of our emails, all of our communications, all of everything is in the cloud. 
and you had uh, people working with desktop cloud tool, uh, desktop cat tools because it was more secure. They would send um, a email with the complete uh, terminology base and the complete translation memory to a freelance linguist sitting in the McDonald's uh, to their hot uh, hotmail.com, which will forever reside there. And uh, they'll work on a desktop cattle because it's more secure. Yeah. And then uh, Microsoft uh, convinced others that Azure is secure, right? So people are using Azure at uh, big corporations in Germany now, and Germany is the most uh, reluctant country to go for uh for cloud-based systems they say asia is secure now and millions of people use DeepL and consider it a secure solution yeah absolutely I it's, agree. it's just some time which is needed to process the anxiety awesome okay so wow. is, so many other... questions yeah. <laughs> where so do you we think... start you you go on well, uh, we answered the question for Boriana, Georgia, and Luisa already. So let's go with Mark. Do you think traditional memory tools will start integrating these to the API? And if so, do you think yeah. we, we will see this in the next six to 12 months? Yes. So I give you some examples. Uh, everything is switching on to this model because it's powerful. Uh, you have uh, Pangeanic. Uh, in Spain, one of our big friends, and one of the main interesting service is anonymization. They tested, and this week they published, oh, we switched to ChatGPT for anonymization. They've been building anonymization models for years, and ChatGPT comes out, they try the API, and they drop their models, and they go for ChatGPT. I don't know, maybe not completely, but you can imagine. It is better at extracting entities in the languages and replacing them with placeholders. So you can send like you know, a court ruling, a medical record, uh, and remove the, the names and the numbers and stuff, right? Then uh, Unbubble, the leader in, um, uh, one of the leaders at least, uh, in predictive quality estimation, is translation good? They built the SCOMAT models and they worked with uh, Alon Lavi for years to, to excel. I speak with Alon Lavi. He says, okay, these models are trained on, on a previous language model. We might consider moving on to, to a new generation of models, right? So again, the look quality is great. Let's use it. Uh, to integrate it is pretty easy. Uh, to customize it is, again, pretty easy. So smart entrepreneurial uh, people will be integrating it into everything. It's also very cheap. Right, you don't pay a uh, hundred bucks per million characters; you pay two. Right, so you can use it in anything. So my my question to this would be: did, What are you thinking about about your own business model? Because you've been customizing empty models, right? So yeah, yeah. So we now we need well. to we need to customize the GPT models and make sure they work. Right, to have all the scripts that push this through the API and make it work in a scenario where an expert can come in, review, and have a quick feedback loop. Feedback loop. So I'm looking into this. This is going to be a million of uh, a million applications built on top of uh, GPT, and I want to be a part of that process. Me too. Thank you. The, yes, I that's that's our slogan. Here. Want to slow. on top of of the situation. What would be your first product that you're thinking about? How yeah, to... I already demonstrated it, right? Uh, a situation when a translator can teach uh, machine translation on the fly. The problem with uh, cattles is that they're segment based around translation memory, and when you feed one segment into the translation memory, the quality is much lower than when you feed a paragraph, right? So they need to um become easier to use where you upload the whole paragraph and you translate the whole paragraph but they'll have to drop translation memory for this because translation memory doesn't work on a paragraph okay so there's a question in the chat and a lot of questions in the q a session uh, section uh i will go with alex because that's of interest to all of us i guess can chat gpt be trained as a proofreader and do the post editing 
of Google being DeepL, whatever. And yeah, it can. Anyone tried already? And what's the result? I guess it's we haven't. To share an example. We haven't. So you would have Google Translate and ChatGPT edit. That's uh, that's a little bit insane. It's like who who does the work anyway? There's nobody doing the work. You uh, can also rewrite, similar. right? What people do, they rewrite uh, the source to make it closer to the translation memory. And uh, this has been tested with positive results. Yeah, I tried that myself with some Italian and English content and for our, our, our own company, for our own communication needs. It was a case study. We did post editing into English. And then I gave it to ChatGPT, GPT. And the result was really, really good. Well, the difference, I don't think we can talk about Levenstein uh, distance uh, at this point, but the difference was impressive. impressive. Sometimes uh, the, the Levenstein distance is misleading, right? You would have something closer to translations, but it reads awkwardly or awfully, and you have uh, it written in a different way, which is more beautiful and concise. I mean, yeah. how many people you know, humans, who write as good as ChatGPT does? Very few. Very, very few. Very few. Very few. Right? So, uh, I don't know. It's probably in the 10% top writers. Not in 1%, but 10% at the moment, right? So, what if you give it a rewrite it's, uh, and it's better, right? It, it's more concise, more emphatic, more uh, clear. So. Is the that... language of the prompt important? I mean, I if I don't remember, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I use the prompt in English to fix a text in Italian. And the result was an improved text in English already. So it was like posting two prompts. I think you, uh, you, you have the answer uh, from your yeah. own experience. Let me give you an example. Have you tried Mid Journey or Dali? Many so, times. a normal person goes into Dali and Mid Journey, they produce a, an image which is not so great. But someone who really knows how to ask the model, they come in and they can produce a uh, photorealistic, stylized, uh, super detailed, amazing pictures which uh, are better than reality. Uh, right? You want to only look at those pictures. Uh, right, so prompt writing, how you do it is important. That's why uh, there is uh, this opportunity to become a better prompt writer for a while. And let me post, I would love to post a course that I took this morning. Sorry, sorry for that. But, uh, so I, I took a course this morning about, about this, about prompt engineering, and I'm trying to get to the audience. If you are in LinkedIn Learning or you can start your own free trial, I recommend this one. I was shocked. I was really shocked. <laughs> or it's it's really like you know building approval after approval, and it's it's great. Absolutely. The link doesn't Should... work, but I'm interested. Yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. No, we have no. to be. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, because it's it's my account. Uh, can you I, share I will get, I will get to the, the name. You can share the name, Diego, of the course. Yeah, I, I'll try and get to that. Absolutely. Can I, uh, while you do that, can I take Ginny's Bromberg's uh, question? Absolutely. Uh, she will. Great discussion. What, in your opinion, uh, do you see ChatGPT being most useful at when it comes to business processes? Ginny, this is a very generic question. Could you rephrase it, please? Maybe with the, <laughs> with the help of ChatGPT. Whose business processes? <laughs> what kind of processes? Maybe we could have Ginny come on, on, on the stage. Yeah, definitely. Let's yeah, please. If you raise your hands. Let me look for Ginny here. And Ginny, you're on stage. Thank you. Yeah, great discussion. Um, well, we're looking at implementing ChatGPT throughout our company outside of specific translation. Like, for instance, this morning I was reading an article about ChatGPT being very useful in HR. 
So yeah, um, from reviewing resumes to- um, You can do that. I mean, imagine ChatGPT is Excel. When Excel came about, uh, was it most useful for translations? Did it impact translations in some way? A lot of translations are done in Excel, but right. it's also useful for accounting. It's useful for, for HR to organize the candidates. It's useful for any kind of profession, Excel. So ChatGPT is the same kind of thing, just more powerful. So in Excel, you it, have to work, and ChatGPT, it does the work for you. So I'm just curious if you have tested it in business practices in any aspects of your business. or business. We only test it for, 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 for translations and for data processing. So let me give you an example. Uh, Diego, this is your um, this is your company, right? Yeah. So let's go to um, chat GPT. Where is it? Okay, we do a new chat and I'll do it with 3.5. So extract terminology from the following. text and um, uh, organize by category, category, because I have a, a microphone on my laptop. It's interfering <laughs> with my typing. Yeah, that's mind blowing. Right, and you can uh, now translate it into Italian. We're going to try. And uh, uh, display or list in pairs. I need to ask Grammarly to fix. Maybe I need to uh, optimize my prompt a little bit, but you can get the idea, right? You can work with any kind of text. And this interface is limited, but uh, an API is unlimited, right? So you can use uh, it on huge volumes of information. This is something which uh, was demonstrated to me yesterday by a translator. I talked to a guy, he is uh, running his workshop on this on Thursday with Prozy. Oh, nice. I saw it as well. Cool. Uh, hold on. Stephen Bamo. Put the link here. I Is don't it? have the link. You don't have the link. Okay. Stephen Bannon. Let's okay. Start. So, Ginny, your question is answered. Uh, Thank you, Luisa. I, I don't know if I answered the question, Ginny. It's uh, a bit um, It's a bit all over the place. Every process is, is impacted. Christopher, you asked if you can use ChatGPT as a plugin with MemoQ. I think this is something we should ask MemoQ or maybe Kostya for the future. We'll see that this we want to build a MemoQ connector, right? Uh, if you're interested, let us know because we have already two parties interested in this, uh, in gaming, and uh, we want to expand. Let us know. Uh, another question from Georgia. Uh, how is ChatGPT compared to Grammarly or similar tools for proofreading and spell checking? How's ChatGPT for everything? We haven't tested for proofreading. You can test yourself and let us know. Uh, we'll uh, include your information in the next uh, installment of the show. There, there are some AI uh, tools that have been developed in this, and I think I found one which is uh, especially for grammar and spelling. I think it's Quillbot, something like that. I think Grammarly will integrate ChatGPT at yeah. some point. Probably. Wow. You need to consider like what you do differently from others with ChatGPT because everyone will be using it for everything. And also, yep. how do you protect your prompt, uh, your unique uh, IP, how you ask ChatGPT things so that it delivers you stuff on a silver plate? So yeah, this is something I would be more worried about, about sharing the prompts that I'm able to create rather than sharing the actual content. What do you think? You're again uh, worried about uh, privacy, right? Well, about 
I mean, if I spend a lot of time on creating the perfect prompt, is ChatGPT going to, to keep it and use it and propose it to someone else? Well, if you opted out, they say that no. If you didn't opt out... I don't want to opt out. That, that's the thing, right? If I stay in... No, you have the, uh, the, the sharing program for information. Maybe you have two accounts. One, you, you share your data with the researchers and the other one, you don't. Okay. Good. Good idea with the two accounts. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, there is one question about this. Uh, how do you see pattern translation with ChatGPT? Uh, like everything, it can be disrupted. It could be easily adopted in the language of patents. You just ask it. Uh, this is the language of patent, the your patent office. Put on your, your bureaucracy goggles and uh, they will, uh, of course, uh, switch to a more formal formulaic language. The problem is that uh, language contains knowledge, right? Uh, all of the knowledge of our society is in language. And suddenly you take it as a file and you upload it to a GPU. You churn it for a few million dollars and there you have it, right? The knowledge in the computer. Anyway, I'm uh, blabbing now. What else do we have? We we have five minutes remaining, I, I guess. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So we have a question from Moana. I was writing, Moana, I suggest you get in touch with Constantin about this to show the integration. We don't have time to, to demo about it now. Uh, what do you think? Hopefully you agree with that. Uh, let's go with, uh, well, this is a big one, but I guess it resonates with the audience from Luisa. What do you think will be the most valuable roles in the language business in the future? What happens to us, right? Yeah. Everybody so, asks the same question. So in a nearby... Well, not necessarily it happens to us. I mean, if we embrace it, where do you think we should go? And I mean, look, uh, we, we all know what happens in the next few weeks. Nothing. The next few months, nothing changes, right? People are excited. There is a wave. You can... Uh, use it, you can drop it, maybe it doesn't affect your work at all. We all know what happens in 10 years. All the work is done by uh, machines and uh, humans are uh, involved to less and less uh, degree, maybe 20 years or 30 years. The children are of children, I, I don't know what they do. And nobody knows. It's, it, that's why it's called the singularity, right? Uh, some people fantasize about that, but uh, it's really impossible to predict what happens in the post-work world. There's a few books on this uh, by Chinese and Western writers, uh, like The Economy of Care, where you earn uh, currency on social networks by helping others, for example. And there is the universal basic income and so on. So uh, find your own flavor of sci-fi. Sci uh, my opinion is as good as yours. The, the biggest problem is what happens in the next uh, six months, what happens in the next eight months, right? You communicate this to the customers, the customers come back to you and say, uh, can we replace um, translators with ChatGPT? And of course you tell them, no, you still have some errors uh, that need to be fixed. Are you ready to, uh, to go out with the content? which is not fact-checked, which is not reviewed by humans, they'll tell you, no, we still want the, the fact-checked. And then you negotiate the price, which has been something our uh, industry has been doing forever. Yeah. yeah. So nothing changes. But for the technology-driven guys, of course, it's uh, or ladies. I don't want to monopolize uh, the being technology-driven. It's, of course, a chance to, to shine. There's a technological re revolution, and some people will, of course, try to use it for their advantage to rise up and uh, do something about it. And uh, it's better to be one of those. But if you don't have the character for this or the stomach and you have already a successful business, then some technician on your team will do it for you. Wow. I'm moving, sorry. I don't sit anymore. I've been sitting for too long. Any last comment? From you, Constantine, I know you were supposed to speak like for 20 minutes. Thank you for staying for the full hour. I really appreciate that. We, should, we could talk for hours. I mean, there are so many unanswered questions I, I have. And you Especially if we bring Italian Primitivo and uh, some yes. uh, and ravioli. It would be nice. 
we could we could organize as well a workshop on this if if your time allows and you'll be interested we can organize um well if uh, our attendees are interested as well and would love to hear your opinion so drop us an email about that um Diego or I and would be nice to have uh, some workshops for for our members that's coming up I'm uh, going to host something I don't want to have the last word let's give the last word to Alina the lady on the panel Thank you very much for including me in the panel of, well, the uh, people with glasses that at least try to, to look smart, <laughs> no matter how smart they are behind or not. Uh, thank you very much, Konstantin. Thank everybody for the time allocated today. And we are looking forward to receiving your suggestions, uh, questions, further questions, and we'll be happy to offer as much help as we can. But what did you learn? Did we, did did we discuss something new today? For me, yes, I will. I will try to play with Mid Journey. I had this conversation before. I didn't play with it, and it's a bit uh, well above my knowledge. But I'll uh, make a little bit of effort, and I'm so looking forward to the workshops. Honestly. Well, thank you. Great to know. Uh, many, many do my best to, to launch them fast, faster than others. Thank you. It was amazing. It was mind blowing. Again, I've been following this since the start, and I, I knew some things already many things i learned today so thank you very much thank you for having me and uh, good luck this is something that everyone can play with it's not monopolized by uh, one guy uh hopefully perfect <laughs> thanks ciao, ciao. bye bye ciao, everybody. Thank, thank you, you very much for joining thank, thank you, you. bye, bye, -bye.